Here are a few of the strangest ways people spend money. Wait until you find out just how many people actually get their toes shortened. Number 5. Billionaire Dreams Billionaire hedge fund manager Steve Cohen is no stranger to spending money on strange stuff. When the world-famous contemporary art piece The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, Cohen snatched it up for a mere $12 million. Someone close to Cohen claims he only paid $8 million. Oh, the squabbles, what's a few million dollars? Well, it was still a massive win for collector Charles Satchi, who bought the piece for $93,000 in 1992. What is it? A painting? A sculpture? Cohen purchased a 14-foot tiger shark the artist cut in half and preserved in formaldehyde. The specimen had been showing signs of decay and deterioration. There was some concern by many, but Cohen stepped up to say the shark is in good hands. He had already consulted several conservators before making the bid. When someone has billions of dollars, why not spend some of it on something special, right? Well, where does someone go after buying a formaldehyde tiger shark? friend for a day? Sometimes we all can use a friend, and that's exactly what the embattled hedge fund investor decided to do when he paid celebrity chef Guy Fieri $100,000 to be his, quote, friend for a day. Cohen hired Fieri to drive around Connecticut and play out a mock episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Author Alan Selkin revealed this little interesting story in his book, From Scratch, Inside the Food Network. A longtime Cohen rep insisted the story wasn't true. He insisted that Fieri and Cohen were actually just friends. After making friends with Mayor of Flavortown, then what's next? In May 2019, artist Jeff Koons broke the record for highest price paid for a piece at auction by a living artist. His 1986 three-foot-tall stainless steel inflatable bunny called Rabbit sold for a staggering $91 million to a mystery bidder. That bidder was revealed to be buying in the name of Steve Cohen. $91 million for a stainless steel depiction of a balloon bunny? Makes sense. The sale was historic after all. It was record-breaking and attracted a lot of attention. Apparently, that is not why Cohen bought the piece, as he initially denied being the winning bidder. He was finally outed by online art publication Artnet. The winning bid came from a dealer, Bob Munchen, father of U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Munchen. Munchen admitted that he made the purchase on behalf of his client, Steve Cohen. I wonder how many artists are scrambling to make giant inflatable dogs and giraffes out of melted steel. Cohen could build an ark and fill it with stainless steel balloon animals and bring Guy Fieri along for the ride. If the whole adventure took 40 days, that would set him back a mere $4 million. A great deal. He'd have plenty left to find the other half of that shark. Number 4. Bada Bing Hockey Team Connecticut mobster Jimmy Gallant was a well-known and well-respected guy. For years, he ran a multi-million dollar waste removal empire in the tri-state area. He was called the real-life Tony Soprano. He even had a son named AJ. Don't tell us he also had a place called Bada Bing. But no one can remember the episode of The Sopranos when Tony bought AJ a professional sports team to boost his ego. That's right, I said a team. And you know in what sport? Hockey. In high school, Jimmy's son AJ was a hockey player with big dreams until an injury wiped out his knee and destroyed his dreams of someday hoisting the Stanley Cup from the ice. Jimmy figured buying his kid a minor league team might boost his spirits. Within a few days, Jimmy purchased a minor league franchise, named the team the Thrashers, and moved them to Danbury, Connecticut's Little Ice Rink. AJ was just 17 years old, and he was named the team's general manager. Like any son of a real-life Tony Soprano, AJ hired the most expensive players he could find willing to play for the league. His number one pick was Brent Gretzky, brother to mega NHL superstar Wayne Gretzky. Well, the only way to get Gretzky to play was to pay him $100,000. What would he do to fill out the roster? Well, in true mobster style, Gallant started to cook the books. Players were paid through fake jobs in the waste management company. They almost quadrupled their budget and got the team of bruisers they wanted. Gallant also renovated the teeny Danbury Hockey Stadium to the tune of $3 million. 
he wanted to give something back to the community. And he liked the adrenaline that came with owning a sports franchise. Well, that adrenaline must have spiked when FBI agents raided his offices. His prized minor league team was seized and disbanded after only two seasons. Number three, Soviet vibes. You know how to win baseball games? Get some good energy? Los Angeles Dodgers co-owner Jimmy McCourt is no stranger to money. As one of the owners of the LA Dodgers, she had no problem seeking professional help for her eye infection. While the average person might just search online for the nearest eye doctor, McCourt called on the service of Vladimir Spunt, an aging Soviet-era scientist who claimed to have discovered the magic healing properties of V energy. That's an invisible force that heals people over great distances. With the help of V energy and traditional medicine, her eye infection was healed. Amazing! From the other side of the country, he sent positive thoughts and then, bam, magically, her eye was fine. Well, after seeing his powers up close, McCourt and her husband decided to use the Soviet V wizard to heal the Dodgers baseball team. They contracted Spunk, paying him hundreds of thousands of dollars to watch the Dodgers play on TV and send positive thoughts. It worked! The Dodgers won the National League West pennant. The team went on to fail in the following season. Spunk claimed it was because of a bad relationship with the coach and manager, and they were both fired. When outfielder Jason Worth broke his wrist, Spunk was paid to heal him using his positive magic. Yes, it was such a success that Worth had to sit out the entire season at the orders of a real medical doctor. When the news broke that McCord had hired the V Wizard for his services, she was kicked off the Dodgers board. This just goes to show being rich has its perks for the best energy possible. Number two, Pizza Town. Domino's Pizza founder Tom Monahan turned a small store into the global empire of quick delivery pizza that we know today. A devout Catholic, Monahan had a bigger mission than just rolling out perfectly measured pepperoni pies. He also dreamed of creating the perfect no sin town, one definitely without access to hubs of corn if you catch your drift. <laughs> After becoming extremely wealthy, Monaghan enjoyed the fast lane. He bought expensive cars and spent money on a lavish lifestyle. He bought very expensive properties and even his favorite baseball team, the Detroit Tigers. Eventually, he made a decision to sell his assets off and use the money to save souls. With his foundation valued in the hundreds of millions of dollars, he created Ave Maria, the first ever gated community for Jesus. The town was founded around Ave Maria University, which had envisioned becoming one of the world's premier Catholic institutions of research and study. And no surprise, it was all conceived and built around the grandiose Ave Maria Church. Of course, this was still a gated community for old rich people in Florida, so it has a golf course where it's said that daily confessions are held. Convenience is one of the perks of living there, dubbed by critics as the Catholic Jonestown because of its exclusive membership and ideals. It's unknown if Kool-Aid is on the menu at the clubhouse. Number one, weird surgeries. We all think about how we would spend our money if we had a whole lot of money to spend, or maybe how we might spend our money to give ourselves and those closest to us some peace of mind or just to feel better. We might travel the world, indulge on a new wardrobe or a trip to Vegas, and some people want to just look like Barbie. For example, Blondie Bennett wants to experience the world as a real-life Barbie. Bennett says she's obsessed about being Barbie. She even takes hypnotherapy sessions in an effort to lower her IQ so she can become more ditzy. She actually wants to be brainless. In interviews, she's said she's bored with being human and would love to be completely plastic. She spent over $30,000 on her chest alone. In addition to her five chest enhancements, Bennett also has invested in numerous other procedures to help her become a living image of the plastic doll. Botox, lip fillers, and spray tans all give her a more plasticky appearance. And yes, she's unemployed. She relies on the contributions of her online fans to make ends meet. Um, yeah, she probably has an OnlyFans account, but this isn't something we want to look up. While not everyone wants to be Barbie, a lot of people aren't happy with what they have. 
Sometimes they don't like their nose, or they don't like their stomach, or they don't like their droopy eyes. Maybe they want big, luscious lips, like Blondie. Or they just want shorter toes? Hang on, is that even a thing? Seriously? Oh yes, and it's a thriving business. When the second toe, often called the long toe, is in fact longer than the big toe, the condition is known as Morton's foot, or Morton's toe, also known as Greek foot, turkey toe, or royal toe. This is a condition in which the second metatarsal is longer than the first, making the second toe longer. Considered by some to be unattractive, the toe can be shortened with a special toe reduction surgery. It may seem crazy, but toe reduction surgery is actually a thing, and it's a popular thing. At a cost ranging from $500 to $1,500 per toe, thousands of people are having their toes shortened every year. It sort of begs the question, if the second toe is called the long toe, maybe it's totally normal to have long toes? The procedure is commonly called Cinderella surgery and involves breaking and removing a portion of bone from the toe and setting it straight with an implant wire or pin. Recovery takes six or eight weeks. After this surgery, watch out, Prince Charming. But what's probably the most useless surgery? Chiromancy is the characterization and foretelling of the future through the examination of the palm. Also known as chirology, or palm reading, this practice is taken very seriously in Japan. The palms don't lie, and a master palm reader can reveal what fate has in store for you just by looking at the lines on the palm of the hands. So it comes as no surprise that there are people who seek to change the lines on their palms. Cheating fate is really quite simple. With the help of a good plastic surgeon, wielding an electronic scalpel, your life could make a turn for the better. Hope to be married, but you have a no marriage line? Well, a skilled surgeon can give you a new lease on life. The change your hand, change your fate mantra seems to be taking hold in Japan, as demand for the surgery is on the rise. Here's what's next. 